Hello and welcome to another video review. This is The Temple of Elemental Evil, a classic Greyhawk adventure for PC. This is a party-based role-playing game by Troika Games and published by Atari back in 2003, and it's fairly interesting for a variety of reasons. The first of them being that it's a Troika game, so it's one of only three games they actually made. The other two being, of course, Arcanum and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This was sandwiched in the middle of those. The next reason is because it was actually really the only adaptation of the 3.5 edition rules that Dungeons & Dragons had. You had things like Neverwinter Nights, which were actually just straight up 3rd edition, and you had the classics like Baldur's Gate and all that, that were AD&D 2nd edition. But this is really the only one that's an actual adaptation of 3.5, and it's actually pretty much the closest you can get to the tabletop game in terms of just the raw rules representation. So that makes it a bit more interesting. And the last thing that's really interesting about it is that it's a return to Greyhawk. By this point, D&D was well into stuff like the later Forgotten Realms and such like that. And going back to the classic Greyhawk setting, and specifically the classic module, the Temple of Elemental Evil, which we're talking 80s here, AD&D rules, it's just such a nice throwback, and adapting the story and everything from the Greyhawk Temple of Elemental Evil setting way back when into 3.5 rules and video game form it's certainly an interesting idea. So the question becomes, how did that actually work out? Well, as far as the presentation goes, it's certainly very interesting, namely in that it's actually 2D environments, but 3D character models. And so you have this kind of weird difference between the characters and the way they move and everything like that, and the way the environments look. And so you have environments that are still very good looking to this day. They did a very, very good job with the artwork in this game. And character models that, while they wouldn't have aged as well normally, because it's done in this kind of 2D isometric perspective, it actually ends up working out pretty well. But really, I think it's mostly that they put such detail into the animations, even from this zoomed out perspective, to where you'll see things like even cloth moving the way cloth actually moves. And it's just that kind of attention to detail it really does make this game still visually appealing despite being released so long ago at this point. And then there's the sound design, which is a bit all over the place, but really what D&D game hasn't had sound design that's kind of all over the place. On the one hand, you have voice acting, which is often incredibly cheesy and ridiculous, and it works out okay. I mean, they're just kind of hamming things up. But when the game's trying to be serious and some of the voice acting is really corny, it doesn't really do all that much for it. The sound effects are all pretty well done. You have a fair number that are pretty hard hitting and work very well for making you more interested in what's going on, but they're nothing particularly amazing. And then there's the music, which is an extremely subjective thing. Some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it. And it's not really like music you're used to hearing in fantasy RPGs. It's actually this kind of weird, hard to describe style, where some of it is actually kind of funky, in a way. Again, it's hard to describe, I recommend you look it up for yourself, but suffice to say, some tracks are better than others, I like, for example, the combat music for Hamlet and the actual just music when you're running around in the village of Hamlet very nice. For example, the village music is very nice and calm and gives you this nice sense of a respite, whereas the combat music for it is just really not like anything I've ever heard in any RPG ever. And so it certainly wins points for originality, but like I said, it's an extremely subjective thing. You're probably either going to love it or hate it. Most of the time I was able to put up with it just fine, but sometimes it did get kind of annoying particularly when it would just blare some music for a long period of time that just wasn't all that interesting. That normally happens during combat scenarios that just tend to drag on and on. But I'll get to that more in a moment. Because that leads me into what really matter here, the story and the gameplay. And the story in this is very familiar if you've played the actual Temple of Elemental Evil module. It's not exactly the same, they did take some liberties here and there. 
but if you have played the module, then this is going to be a very familiar romp for you. And if you haven't, then this is pretty much your chance to try out one of the classic D&D modules that kind of fell by the wayside, particularly with 4th edition when they decided that Eberron was the way to go. But that's beside the point. The idea here is that the characters are introduced to the main story by way of an entry vignette. And that's going to change depending on what your party's alignment is. For example, if you play a good party, then you stumble across this woman who has been murdered. And you need to basically bring news of her death to the village of Hamlet. And things just kind of go from there. The vignette doesn't really matter all that much. Okay. What really matters is that your party runs into the village of Hamlet basically seeking adventure. And from there, it starts off as a simple adventure of, well, you need to go to this moat house and take out these bandits that have taken up residence there. But it eventually becomes apparent that there's more than just bandits around here, because you find that the Temple of Elemental Evil is involved. What is that? Well, it's basically an organization that is the source of the evil in the area around Hamlet manifesting. It was thought to have been exterminated years ago, but now it seems like it's coming back, and of course, you have to go and deal with it. And there are a few ways you can go about doing this that do actually result in some different endings, depending on what manner in which you decided to deal with the Temple of Elemental Evil, but ultimately, the plot really doesn't matter all that much. It's enough to hold the game together and keep your interest at least for a while, but ultimately, it's really going to fall to the gameplay to determine whether or not you're going to actually enjoy this thing. So, of course, that begs the question, what's the gameplay like? Well, like I said, it is a party-based role-playing game in that it's like an old-school D&D adventure. What does that mean? Well, that means you create a party of adventurers and you go off on an adventure. In that you basically roll all your stats out in the classic D&D style. You can do as many re-rolls as you want, and in fact, it's kind of advantageous to do so, simply because it means that you're going to get some ridiculous stats eventually and you are well advised to create some variety within your party. You'll probably want at least two fighters, a rogue, a mage of some description, probably a cleric as well. And you also pick your party alignment and that determines what you can do with the various you know, characters that you've got, as well as things like what your opening vignette is going to be. But ultimately you're going to have your party of adventurers and you can of course add some characters to it as you go through the game. They do give you basically five slots to work with at the start, and then you can add up to three more. But that's pretty much it. You're just running around doing adventures, fighting monsters, completing a few side quests here and there that are pretty simplistic and mostly just involve going to a dungeon and killing things and maybe returning with an item that that person wanted. So pretty standard D&D &D stuff, really. And if you don't like that, well then you're going to have a bad time. Because well this isn't a full-on role-playing game, so to speak. It's really more of a tactical combat game that happens to also be a role-playing okay. game. Which leads me into one of the biggest strengths and one of the biggest weaknesses of the game. It's a turn-based combat okay. system, and it is an extremely faithful adaptation of the 3.5 rules with some mixture of normal 3rd edition stuff here and there as well. But by and large, you're going to be dealing with this very stat-based, heavy rules-oriented combat system. And that's the big problem as well. Because, like I said, if you like that, if you like the combat system in Dungeons & Dragons, you're going to have a great time with this thing, because it's an extremely faithful adaptation of that. It's tactical. It requires you to actually think things through, to plan in advance, to actually move your characters around appropriately and have them engage targets instead of just running around willy-nilly, kind of like they did in the old Baldur's Gate games. But in this particular instance, it also means that combat can drag on and on. Because if you know anything about D&D Tabletop, you know that the combat can drag on and on and on. And it gets really irritating when that happens. Because you can, in the Tabletop anyway, have combat sessions that go upwards of an hour or more. That's perfectly normal. Whereas, 
in the video games, it's not a good idea to do that. It's more of a good idea to have maybe 5 to 10 minute combat sessions at best. Meanwhile, in Temple of Elemental Evil, I've had combat sessions go upwards of 30 minutes. And that may seem like not that much, but it does add up. And if you're dealing with situations like D&D &D can have, it can actually be pretty irritating. For example, if you're constantly missing, that just drags things out. Because ultimately everything does come down to dice rolling and things like that. But what you find is that combat sessions can either go really quickly, depending on what you're fighting and how many combatants are involved and things like that, or they can just drag on and on, again, depending on the same parameters. And so that's really what makes or breaks this game for you. If you like D&D's combat, you will probably like Temple of Elemental Evil. If you don't, then you're probably not going to like it. And it's not like that's the only problem this game has, either. It does have quite a few technical problems, a lot of which were never really resolved. You do have the Circle of Eight mod pack that you can install that you can either run just the vanilla game or you can run the actual modded Circle of Eight version. But the Circle of Eight mod pack doesn't need to completely rewrite the way the game works. If you just go with the bug fixes and such that it does, then that actually does help the game out quite a lot. Because even if you patch it all the way up, it ends up still having a lot of stability problems. It will crash on occasion. You'll have a fair number of bugs and glitches throughout the game. It's a Troika game that pretty much is guaranteed to happen because they weren't exactly given the best QA time or the even worse problem, they weren't exactly given enough time to actually develop their games completely and had to just ship them out with whatever the problems were at the time. And some of that involves some stability problems, which is exactly what happened with Temple of Elemental Evil. So ultimately what you have here is a very well put together game, no question about that, that it just happens to be fairly buggy and have some stability problems even if you install the community fixes. And it doesn't have a particularly great storyline, but it's enough to keep you going. And if you like D&D &D combat, this is definitely the game for you, because let's face it, this is the most faithful adaptation of the tabletop rules that you're ever going to find. But at the same time, this is the most faithful adaptation of the D&D &D rules that you're ever going to find. And if you're like me and you don't particularly like the D&D &D rules, that can be pretty problematic. But even then, I still managed to enjoy the Temple of Elemental Evil, despite its problems and despite the fact that it, more often than not, handed me my ass. It's not an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's, at times, pretty brutally difficult. But it's still a very well put together and fairly enjoyable game. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.